If you're recording the RAW plus JPEG or HEIF file formats for those beautiful straight out of camera JPEGs, but to also have the flexibility to process RAW files, I'm willing to bet you have some issues or at least some questions regarding your workflow. How should you set up in-camera recording to dual cards? How do you set up your computer software to handle different formats of the same image? And how do you archive those photos? We're gonna look at all of that in this video, uh, tips for a RAW plus JPEG workflow. Let's start with your camera setup. Your camera has different settings for recording both the RAW and the JPEG file formats. And if you do want to have those JPEGs ready to share, I'd recommend recording the highest JPEG quality, whatever that is in your camera. Here's what it looks like in Fujifilm X cameras and here on Nikon Z cameras. And if your camera has dual card slots, how should you set those up? You'll have options for recording RAW files to one card and JPEGs to the other or both file formats to the same card. And I'd recommend saving the RAW and JPEG pairs to the same card and we'll see how that helps our workflow in just a minute. In Fujifilm cameras, that's the sequential setting and in Nikon cameras, that's the overflow setting. For other camera brands, check your manual for specifics. You also need to make sure that your processing software is all set up for an efficient RAW JPEG workflow. Now we're gonna look at three programs here, the ones that I use. You'll have to check help articles for other software that you might use, but I hope this can make you aware of at least what you should be looking for. The basic considerations are that one, each RAW and JPEG pair should have the same name when you rename them. The same text and sequence number as one another, it's just the file extension that's gonna be different. And that's important for organization and identification. Two, when you're editing the photos, meaning adding the ratings, metadata, identifying rejects and deleting those, I recommend applying those edits to the pairing, to both files and not just one. And this again is going to help with organization. Third, different from the last consideration, when you're processing those files, now you're applying tonal and color corrections, you likely only want those corrections applied to the raw file, not the JPEG. So there is a lot to take into consideration and get set up for this kind of workflow. In Photo Mechanic, which is great for organization and editing, you want to make sure that in the ingest dialog, you have copy raw and non-raw photos set in that filter dropdown. And that'll make sure that both formats are copied over uh, and the pairs are treated as one file, more or less. They'll be copied to the same location with the same file names. And that's why I recommend recording the pairs to the same memory card. It's easier to treat them as the same photo when you're working in Photo Mechanic and a lot of other programs. And then when you're editing in Photo Mechanic, Make sure you're viewing the combined pairs. Go to view and set combined images. You'll see in the info bar, raw plus JPEG for each image. Now, whenever you're doing ratings, adding captions or keywords, or even deleting files, that'll be applied to both image formats. If you ever want to unpair them, like you want to delete some JPEGs, but keep the raw files, you can always do that with the hotkey Control for a PC or Command for a Mac plus the letter J. When those photos are paired and you want to send them to an external editor like Photoshop or Capture One, you want to be sure that you're sending the raw file over. So go to the Preferences menu, Launching, and look for when in RAW plus JPEG mode, setting that to RAW so those raw files are sent. This workflow and all of Photo Mechanic's other settings can be found in my Photo Mechanic Guide video course, which you can preview at photocourses.link PM and use the code BLOG20 to save 20% when purchasing that course. Now let's look at Lightroom Classic, a popular editor and raw processor. This unfortunately does not have an easy way to toggle between raw only 
and RAW plus JPEG modes like we saw in Photo Mechanic. So you're going to need to make that decision before you import your photos to either treat them as separate files or work only with the RAW files. If you go to Preferences, General, and put a check mark next to Treat JPEG files next to RAW files as separate, then you'll see each RAW and JPEG file in your import grid and library view. They'll be treated as entirely different files, which means that when you rename your photos, each pairing will have sequential numbers, meaning the RAW file will have a sequence number like 001.raw and the JPEG pairing will have a sequence number of 002.jpg. If that treat JPEG files next to raw files is unchecked, as it is by default, all of your JPEG pairs will still be imported to your hard drive and even renamed the same as the raw pairs, which is what we want, but they will not be added to your Lightroom catalog. Now that may be enough for you to at least have them on your storage with the same name, but not in your catalog since you won't be doing any tonal or color corrections to them. Moving on to Capture One. That will show you both the RAW and JPEG files separately in the import dialog. You can filter to only show the RAW files or only the JPEG files. But when you select a RAW and JPEG pairing for import, even though they're displayed as separate files, they will be renamed with the same sequence numbers for each pairing, helping, again, with organization and identification. After import, however, they're going back to being treated as separate files. So if you make any metadata changes to a RAW file, it will not be applied to the JPEG pair unless those files are synced or the metadata is copied. Other things to note, you can enable or disable JPEG editing in Preferences Image Editing, and you may want to disable this if you don't want to accidentally go crazy with color and tonal corrections to JPEG photos, or you can enable this if you want to do some basic cropping and retouching to those JPEGs. You can also filter which file format you see in View, Global Filters, selecting to see only the JPEGs, only the RAWs, or both. You can change these views based on which version of file format that you want to work with. Now, what about archiving? Now, you've got 200 RAW photos and 200 matching JPEG pairs from your last photo outing for a total of 400 images taking up space on your hard drive. Do you keep all of the RAW files? keep all of the JPEGs, which ones do you delete? That's just gonna be a matter of personal preference. You saw previously how convoluted RAW and JPEG organization can get with Lightroom Classic and Capture One. Photo Mechanic is just so easy for doing everything but the RAW processing. I love Photo Mechanic for doing all of the editing steps since all changes are applied to both pairings. That means that I can add metadata and delete the rejects for both file types at the same time. Now, I realized after recording this that I didn't really address what I do with my RAW and my JPEG files. It may be very similar to what you do with your files, or you could have completely different reasons. But here's why I record both and what I do with both. It depends on if I'm photographing for my own personal work or if I'm doing commissioned work. If I'm doing personal work, I'm primarily working with the JPEGs. I'm not really processing all of my RAW files when I do personal work. I try to get my JPEGs correct in the camera to save me that processing time, but I still do keep the RAW files as an archive in case I ever do want to go back and reprocess something different than how it was processed in the camera. So the JPEG files are my primary working file, and then the RAW files are the backup. It's opposite, however, when I'm doing commissioned work. When I'm doing commissioned work, I primarily work with the RAW files. However, the JPEGs are there as backup, or if I need to immediately share a photo, 
with a client or to social media before processing, going through all of the raw files, then I have that JPEG that I can share right away. So the raws are the primary in that case, and then the JPEGs are the secondary or the backup. Now, no matter which one of these scenarios that I'm in, I can do the exact same first steps of my workflow in Photo Mechanic. For both scenarios, I'll start with identifying the rejects. Those are the photos that may be out of focus. They have awkward gestures. People's eyes are closed. I'll delete both the raw file and the JPEG file, the pair for all of those. And that's what I do in my first sweep. Then I do all of my editing, picking my favorites, adding the metadata, but I don't want every single JPEG file on my memory card on my storage. So what I will do is I will delete all but the strongest. So if I'm doing personal work, I'll delete all the ones that I don't want to keep. I do have all those raw files still. And then when I'm doing commission work, once I'm done with all of the raw processing, I'll delete the original JPEGs that came out of the camera, except for maybe some of the strongest. Again, so I don't have all of the pairs because I do have the original RAW file. Recording the RAW plus JPEG format has a lot of advantages for certain types of photographers, but it can make your post-processing workflow exponentially more complex. So make sure you think through how you're going to manage all of it. I recommend recording the pairings to the same memory card. And as far as software is concerned, Photo Mechanic is hands down the easiest way to manage this kind of workflow. Be familiar with it. You can check out our linked course to learn more about it. And then you just simply send your chosen raw files over to your raw processor of choice once all that organization is complete. Lightroom Classic is probably the most limiting, complex, and confusing software for this kind of workflow, which is why I don't recommend it. Capture One isn't a whole lot better either, but it does have some advantages. No matter which program you want to use, just know that there are countless ways to crack this nut, and I hope these recommendations help you do that. If you have any other suggestions for a RAW plus JPEG workflow, please share them in the comments for other photographers. Let us know if you have any other questions. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.